Okay, so uh, thank you all for having me here today. Uh, this is such a cool opportunity. I've like, really enjoyed everybody's stories so far. Um, so last fall, uh, like Michelle, I was on an ACM program uh, in northern Tanzania called uh, Tanzania Ecology and Human Origins. So during the first uh, month and a half of this time we spent um, at the University in Dar es Salaam uh, taking courses which included research methods in anthropology. Um, during this time, I really started to read a lot about the Maasai people, who I knew that uh, we were gonna, going to have a chance to spend some time with uh, later on in the program and to ask lots of questions. Uh, here's an idea of where the Maasai live um, in northern Tanzania. They have a population of about 800,000. Um, our field site was just north of Tangier National Park um, there. So traditionally, the Maasai are pastoralists, meaning that much of their society is based around managing livestock. Um, drinking milk and eating meat to the Maasai is sacred because um, the cow has a very important place in their myth of origins. Um, but in order to maintain this traditional pastoralist, semi-nomadic way of life, they need to have access to really good water sources and to uh, vast tracts of land, um, which um, many of their traditional um, lands have been turned into exclusive national parks. Um, which they can no longer go into because the Tanzanian government moves them out of them. So uh, many Maasai today uh, no longer have access to um, many of their traditional lands and they cannot uh, maintain their traditional uh, large herd sizes. So um, uh, especially during the dry season they have trouble finding um, good water sources. Um, now they rely primarily on subsistence farming. Um, staying put and growing things like white maize um, uh, and on uh, income from tourism that also naturally benefits the Tanzanian government. So um, these changes have obviously had an impact on many aspects of their lifestyles, including their diets. Uh, that, that's what I was primarily interested in. I was, learning, uh, I was interested in learning how closely they were um, sticking to their traditional diets, high in meat and milk, um, and to see if I could gain any insights into how, uh, how their current nutrition is. I knew that there would be a real value for me, uh, both personally and intellectually, to examine these kinds of questions firsthand because, I mean, we all know that there are many populations around the world um, suffering from chronic conditions like vitamin A deficiency um, because of lifestyle changes that are mainly out of their control. So in the case of the Maasai, um, we know that they are really, many of them are really trying to hang on to their um, traditional way of life. Uh, both men and women spend a lot of time uh, each day looking for um, water sources to, um, to for, for their uh, cattle. So um, I decided I would examine the current diets of Maasai women because I had heard from previous students on the ACM trip that they were a lot easier to find uh, during the day. So uh, instead of trying to find men, I knew that I could get more data and do more interviews with Maasai women um, to see if they were sticking close to their um, nutritious traditional diets, which would be heavy on organ meat and heavy on drinking lots of milk. Um, the question was, how could I go about doing this best? So luckily, while still at the University of Dar es Salaam, I read a food security study done with populations like the Maasai in Africa, um, which led me to find a questionnaire uh, designed by the Food and Drug Administration that I thought I could utilize and model my project after. So um, the, the purpose of this questionnaire, uh, as you can see there are 14 different food categories here. Um, it's meant to measure the dietary diversity or the average number of food groups eaten by individuals in a population. Um, so I thought this was a great tool, but the first thing I had to do was figure out what foods were available to the Maasai. Um, luckily, uh, I spent a lot of time talking to a Tanzanian research assistant named Kibaja, who uh, who's very knowledgeable about um, conditions in rural Tanzania. And when I first arrived at our field site near Ola City, um, I went to the Masai Sunday, Sunday market to um, kind of get an idea of what foods were available to them. The foods listed here are the ones that are um, that have good vitamin A, so good vitamin A levels. Um, all, fo all 14 food groups were available to them even during the dry season. Um, the, the idea would be to ask Maasai women to think about the foods that they had eaten on the day before um, to do a 24-hour food recall and to 
um, kind of check off the list as they went and to uh, probe them with food items on my list to see um, like if they had drank milk and to see if they say yes or no. So in this way I thought I could get an accurate measurement of their diets. So uh, all in all I interviewed 18 Maasai women over the course of three and a half weeks while living uh, in Ola City uh, near Tarangiri National Park. I also got the chance to cook uh, what I would find out to be a typical uh, meal of boiled maize, which is called ugali in uh, Kiswahili, and um, of cabbage, tomatoes, onions, and cow fat in a, Ma in a Maasai woman's home, um, which is also called the Boma. Uh, the top picture here is uh, the team of translators, which myself and 13 other anthropology students shared um, over the course of that three and a half weeks. At first, it was really challenging logistically to try um, to utilize them, because there, there are four pictures here, but there are really five with us. Um, without them, like after a while, uh, after a while, it got easier um, logistically to use them. But um, without their expertise, I mean, they're all uh, fluent in three languages: Kiswahili, English, and Ma. And uh, without them, none of us could have done our research. The other two pictures here were done during my participant observation when I cooked a traditional or a typical meal with a Maasai woman. Um, so yeah, uh, as you can see, all the Maasai women ate ugali. It was a staple cereal um, of their population. Coming in second place was other vegetables like tomatoes and onions. Um, tomatoes are considered a vegetable culturally to the Maasai. Um, and coming in third were legumes, so beans. Um, as you can see, no uh, organ meat was eaten, and only 40% of the population ate flesh meat, and low percentages ate or drank milk. So clearly they are stepping away from their traditional diets high in um, milk and meat. The dietary diversity of the population was 4.38, meaning that on average, the Maasai women ate four to five food groups on the day previous. Um, the bars shown in red here are food items that do have vitamin A in them, and as you can see, there are pretty low um, levels there. It's interesting that the Maasai had all 14 food groups available to them, but didn't eat all of them either. I think that's indicative of cultural context and everything. So uh, all women ate about this much ugali once or twice a day, typically sharing, um, sharing with three or four other members of their, of their family. Um, they really, really love it. Uh, when I had it, I thought it was tasteless. But um, the, the fact of the matter is it's really dense and really starchy, so it really fills their bellies. And uh, it's not really, it's completely devoid of nutrients. Um, and yeah, they typically eat it once or twice a day. Um, so again, uh, the Maasai, um, it's pretty clear that they aren't subscribing to their traditional diets, high in meat and milk. Um, and across the board, in terms of uh, vitamin A data, there are pretty low percentages of the population um, um, eating, eating across the board. Um, again, milk and milk products here, only 28% of the population had eaten them on the day previous. So like we have, we have tools to address issues like this. Um, we know that uh, we can genetically modify crops to express vitamin A and um, other vitamins as well. Uh, there's just a cultural stigma um, in Tanzania especially uh, because, I mean, it's genetically modifying crops. So how do we address this issue? Maybe it's through education, maybe it's through something else. Um, but we do know that like, the Maasai are another population that are deficient in vitamin A, so how we need to think about how we can best help them, um, help them keep their culture um, alive. So thank you very much. Um, that was